Hey, Leslie here from Cylon Rolling Acres. I just wanted to do a short intro to my next video. So I um, was out moving goats this afternoon into a new paddock. We rotationally grazed them. And um, I just was admiring the results of our bale grazing from this last winter. And so the video you'll see is actually um, horizontal. It's because um, I went live on Instagram. Um, that's we. That's if you wanna catch a lot of our day-to-day -day life of what we do here on the farm with our goats and sheep. Um, um, raising them in um, with rotational grazing practices and regenerative farming practices. You can head over there and see what we're doing there. But I thought it was too good to sh not to share, even if it was the wrong <laughs> direction for your um, for this format, for this video. You'll see kind of the results of bale grazing. And I'm just here, of course, appropriately by our hay for feeding this winter, which will continue to bale graze this winter as well. We're in Western Wisconsin. Um, as much as I would love to not bale graze or feed hay, it's inevitable for our climate. Um, there, we have to do it at some point. So, uh, but bale grazing can be a really great benefit for improving the health of your soil. So go ahead, watch along. If you have any questions, let me know or in the comments below. Good afternoon. Um, I am out here getting ready to move our goats and sheep out to their next paddock. But I was just setting the fence for our next paddock move. And um, I just was being a little nerdy now and observing um, some of the the, um, how do you call it? the results of our bale grazing from last winter. It's hard to, um, for, for me right now to think about winter when we are transitioning from summer till fall. I love fall, but that usually means winter is coming. We're in Wisconsin, if you've been following me. Um, I, I have like this denial thing about fall because as much as I love it, snow will be here before we know it. But I just had to like geek out on this and show you some of the residual effects from bale grazing. Um, I just was at um, a business workshop last week and was talking with um, one of my <laughs> Instagram mentor or um, business kind of colleagues, friends. I don't know what you call it when you don't live by each other, but um, Caroline, um, Nelson, who's in Montana, we were talking about bale grazing and like, how does it work and results. And so I just want to show you some examples. So like this area of our pasture, I'm going to flip it around. We bale grazed last um, winter. And so, you know, at first glance, you might not necessarily see some differences, but I'm just going to walk through and show you. So over here, you're just going to take my hands and showing you, this is going to show you, we didn't do any bale grazing here because we're really close to the fence line. Hey there. And then if you start to watch the quality of our pasture and how it changes, so you start to see like, we've got tall dried out grass because we had a drought this summer, but you can start to see some of the changes is a little thicker grass. And then all of a sudden we have big swaths of really thick grass in this area. And so as I step back, you can start to see you can see these it's kind of like a crop circle I don't know if you call it that's probably not the best <laughs> term a pasture circle I know you, we have round bales we feed so you can see the residual effects here so it's c carrying a lot more carbon underneath the in the soil here from the um, residue that was left behind from the round bales so the goats and sheep don't eat everything they're also distributing fertilizer out here for us so that means they're um, the, we're realizing the mineralization that comes directly here into the soil instead of having to move it to a our um, our compost pile from in the barn. It's happening right here from them peeing and pooping out here while they they are out wintering, and we're seeing those effects. So you can kind of see, you know, from here where um, you know there's a difference here, and then if we walk over here, you can see another difference here. And sure, like this is like we keep having changes in our pasture, um, oh, you call it um, diversity and what's planted here. But overall, this is really because we have the added benefit from the, the bale residue and the fertilization. We're getting more organic matter and more carbon in the soil here. We're actually able to retain more moisture and actually see a lot increased of growth in this area. And so um, it's pretty... I just had to share this, it's kind of like nerdy of me, but you know, that's what happens when you get into the weeds, literally, <laughs> in your work you do. So you can see another patch right here. And so I'm just gonna flip back around. Um, I would say in this area for us, this this was, we bale grazed this last winter. 
So we can start to see a lot of these effects here. This area, there were some parts that were a little thick with residue in the springtime. So um, what we did is we brought the, the big tractor out here and kind of scraped the res bale residue around. We didn't take it off, but we just evenly distributed it. So we didn't really have any issues, um, or at least minimizing the issues of um, choking out what was underneath. But ultimately, um, plants and will start to regrow. And this is good signs of without even me digging up um, a chunk of soil, of healthy um, soil life underground. But my guess is there's a lot of good soil aggregates down here and a lot of great soil microbes and energy going to work. So we've been doing this throughout this pasture. It's needed a lot of work over time. Um, we have a lot of trees in here. I don't mind the trees in our pasture. It gives shelter for our goats, but um, it also has left our soil pretty acidic as we've reno renovated it over time. So um, this is, bale grazing has been a tremendous um, impact on our soil health and our pasture quality um, and also retaining moisture in our pastures over time. So I'm a huge advocate of bale grazing. Um, I'll try to point to a link or something in the comments later on here. So if you're interested in learning more about bale grazing, but I just like to show um, when I spot it just because it's just pretty impressive. So I, um, throughout this next winter then, I'll be kind of keeping an eye on here, but like there's other areas where our soil um, just isn't um, where I want it to be right now. We're still working on, re on regenerating and continuing to improve upon it. So those are areas where, we are, where we're gonna continue to bale graze our goats throughout and sheep throughout winter. And um, we'll start to see the impacts of that over time. Um, you know, at some point I probably would like to scatter some other seeds and things like that around over here just to kind of continue to add to the diversity, but between what's left in the bale and then what's in, um, because we can't cut perfect hay, there's always gonna be some seed heads in there too. And then what, um, we just have in our natural seabed, we will start to see um, diversity come up from that regard too. And I really like having that natural um, diver diversity from um, the seabed from what existed a long time ago before we start, just because that I know is if it was here a hundred years ago, it's probably going to thrive in this environment um, going forward. So there's just a little bit of, um, Know, snippet on the benefits of bale grazing and I'm standing in front of you here while it's not winter time um, so it's fun to see it come to life so I'll just point out a little bit more on my way out since I know a few of you just hopped on um, so we've got I'm just showing the examples of where we have residual effects from bale grazing so you can see right here this really thick area of grass um, and then if we start to walk over here you can start to see some of the differences over here where it's a lot lighter less dense um, you can see again over here, um, just the differences in our pasture quality, simply from the practice of bale grazing. So thanks for joining me. Now I got to get back to moving those goats and sheep over there. They are not very happy with me. Um, they saw me and they're ready to come. So I've got to go move them. Have a good day.